Hi guys, in today's video, I'm going to be doing this look that you see here. It's a very neutral, daytime, appropriate brown smoky eye with a little kiss of rose gold. I am absolutely in love with this um, look. Used the Catherine Lights Dream Street palette. It's a very good palette. I liked it. I love the metallics in here. The mattes were really good. And if you guys want to see how I achieve this look, then just keep on watching. So I popped off camera and I did one eye. You see this copper rose gold daytime smoky eye. I'm feeling it. Anyway. Let's go ahead and get started with the eye look. So, because there is no light cream bone shade, they're all kind of warm. I do want to start off with um, a light bone shade. These are my eyeshadows. I'm just going to be dipping into those to start off this look. I'm not selling them. I'm, I hopefully will in the future. And I'm taking it on a Jaclyn Hill JH36 brush. It's like the fluffiest blending brush ever. I love this brush. Yep. So basically it's like a pinky toned cream shade. So all of the other shadows will look gorgeous. Now we are going to dip into this palette, you guys. Now with the Kathleen Lights palette, I'm going to take the same exact brush that I was just using and I'm going to dip into Shooting Star. And I'm just going to place that right here. It's like a neutral brown, so it's like perfect sort of to put right there at the front of your brow as like a contouring shade. That's like the perfect transition color. Um, then I'm going to dip into the shade Magical. just over here on the outer portion of the upper transition give it more warmth on the outer edge because I'm going to be using that matte brown shade this you can be super loosey-goosey with you can't really mess this part up and these transitions are amazing in this eyeshadow palette for the next shade I'm going to be dipping into potion and I'm going to take that on a Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH32 brush Top off the excess and I'm just gonna pat that on the outer corner. I always like to pat on the outer corner because generally I'm gonna be putting the deepest shades on the outer corner so then it's just easier to blend. If you start in the center unless you're doing a real specific look where you're not doing an outer like you don't want it flared on the outer edge you want it kind of like more oval then you would do a different technique but for this technique this is how we're doing it. I had a couple of people ask me whenever I'm blending it looks like I'm doing it so effortlessly and that is because I take a very small amount of product at a time. I don't go heavy in with any of my brushes while I'm doing these looks and I use really nice, this is a very fluffy blending brush. That's why it looks so diffused and it looks kind of so easy because I'm not having to worry about how much pigment I put on the end. When I get into the deeper shades, you'll see I use smaller brushes in those areas. I'm going to take a Morphe M507 small precision tapered blending brush and I'm going to take Potion. And I'm going to stamp it on the outer edge in a V shape. And you see, with this precision brush, I am just stamping the color because I want to get the matte in the place that I want to and then I blend out with my fluffier brushes and then after I put my metallics down I'll go back in and really chisel out and define it's all about the balance so that's what I'm trying to do whenever I'm using all of these brushes I'm just trying to get the look to be super balanced Everybody does something different. I typically do not go in with my deepest shade on the outer edge first, before my metallics, I mean. I do it after. And that just gives me way more control on how deep I want it to be. Because there's been so many times where I put down the metallic that I want, and then I'm like, ooh, I wish I wouldn't have went in with that deepening shade because it just doesn't match. Especially because like, I actually haven't, I haven't used most of the colors in this palette 
I picked it up just to support Kathleen a very long time ago, and I've used it maybe once, twice. And there's really no reason for that other than that I have so much makeup that I just never... I mean, you're always wanting to try the newest thing, and that's kind of the problem with makeup sometimes. Next, I'm going to go in with Starburst on my finger, and I'm just going to tap that right. And, oh my god, look at the shape. Look at that shadow right there. And there's no fallout with these metallics. I just like using my finger because I'm not making this like a super defined cut crease. Wanting to get a roundabout shape. If you wanted to make it a little bit more precise, then you want to use a more precision brush. Next, I'm going to take a slightly more dense packing brush. I'm going to wet that brush. And I'm going to go right back into Starburst. And now that I have the initial lay down, so whenever I'm trying out a palette, and what determines whether I continuously keep using it, or if I, you know, if I do or don't like it, is how the metallics stack up on each other. These metallics in this, in this palette, they do stack up nicely. It does, it does get a benefit from using a wet brush, which is fine. I don't really see that as a negative. Perfect. Now that I have it all over the lid, I'm going to take the same brush, same brush, and I'm going to go into Twinkle, which is the rose gold shade, and it's perhaps my favorite shade in the palette. It's a very interesting rose gold. And I put it right over top of that copper, just in the inner portion. And if you see the difference between the intensities, it's because after I go in with my metallics, I go over it with the mattes to deepen. And sometimes it can take down the luster, so I may even go back in and intensify this other eye when we're done. The balance. How I prefer to do it. Then I'm going to go back in with that uh, small tapered blending brush and dip into Elfish. And stamp that right on the outer edge. You see how pigmented it is? So you don't, you don't want to start you know, with this shade because you're going to just have like a really deep brown eye. And I'm doing more of a daytime look. If I was trying to do a really smoked out look, I'd use different brushes. Leave a comment down below if you guys like more detailed descriptions of what I'm doing. I'm just taking it down onto the lower lid or the lower lash line. And if you were to see me dipping into this pan, I'm literally, like, tough. Like, I'm not taking a lot of product at all because I don't want it to be too deep. And you, it's really difficult to take it away once you put it there. So, yeah. I think that's where we're going to leave it. And then I'm going to take my fluffy brush again and just go over those edges. And then once like you have it all blended out, see there's no brown, like dark browns on this brush, then I just go like that, up the sides, and flick outwards towards the brow. And that's what gives you that cat eye effect. And you see, actually now, it's already taken down some of the luster from that metallic, which is fine. This is a daytime look, guys. We're not going for super glittery, you know, Instagram look, <laughs> eyeshadows. We're going for actual realistic eyeshadows that are going to look beautiful during the daytime. Go back in with that precision um, blending brush and I'm going to tilt my head up, upwards and I'm going to take Potion, that terracotta shade, right in the inner corner and sweep it down. You see how that will just define it? I think my next videos are going to be a series on kind of explaining in detail each section of my makeup look so that you can get a real understanding on why I'm doing things, how I'm doing things, and what the importance of it is. Because in these kind of makeup tutorials, they'll be way too long. People will start to get uninterested that aren't coming here looking for this kind of information. So I don't like to put it, get too detailed in description during these looks. But you guys let me know. 
Perfect. Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back in with that detailed brush. I'm just gonna like swipe off any of that excess powder that I have on there. And I'm gonna go back into my um, cream shade. This isn't in the palette. This is my, my shade, I'll just call it. And right under the brow, I'll sweep that lighter matte right underneath the brow. And with this also, I'm going in with super light melt. I just want to lighten it just a little bit here. That's good. Next, I'm going to go in with the detailed pencil brush. <coughs> Excuse me. Next, I'm going to go in with the detailed pencil brush. I'm going to take Twinkle. And I'm just going to take that onto my inner corner, just like that. And I'm going to, ah, it's such a beautiful rose gold shade. It's so different because it's like super shiny, but it's not like too blingy until you hit the light with it. Then I'm going to go into the inner corner with Moony, which is more of that champagne satin right over the rose gold because it's going to give me like a champagne tone. Because this, um, let me just show you, this shade in and of itself is super light, but it's more of a satin. So over the top of that rose gold, it gives it more of a champagne highlight because the shade Twinkle is so bright. It, I like the way it looks, so. Boom. Now for the lower lash line, I'm gonna take that precision tapered brush and I'm just on the lower lash line going in with Potion. Yeah, potion. And I'm just going under the lash line. Just like that. Then same brush, going in with Elfish. And I'm just going to keep that right here. I'm going to go in with my relatively clean JH32 brush with no color added to it. And I'm just going to go right here on the outer edge and flick upwards. You see that? That's how you're going to get that buffed, blended look, is by going in with multiple brushes. If you don't have a lot of brushes, I can um, try to do a tutorial on how to get like a natural eye look just using a few brushes and like what's the more important brushes. Um, and just let me know if you want to see that. But for the most part, I do believe that when you use multiple brushes and you're using clean brushes, the, the eye looks looks a lot more clean and less muddy. The, the colors don't muddy up with each other. And yeah. Next I'm gonna take a Jaclyn Hill Morphe JH43. This is the detailed liner brush. It's flat. I'm gonna go into Elfish. Make sure you top off the excess. And I'm going to stamp this right along my waterline. If you are not comfortable with putting a pigment into your waterline. I'm comfortable with, with it because I've worked with this brown eyeshadow and I can tell it doesn't have too much filler in it so it's not gonna be it's not gonna be weird or chalky on my on my waterline. Then I want to stamp it. This is really easy because you don't have this doesn't need precision. This isn't a liquid liner, it doesn't take forever and this is perfect for daytime. Now, this is kind of important. Zoom in, zoom in just a little bit. I'm gonna take that brush, and then right here on the outer edge, you, this one, this brush is perfect because it's flat, so you want to just stamp it and give yourself a little bit of a wing if you stamp it. You see that? You see how quickly I just did that wing? Such a good trick, it's one of my favorite tricks. And I'm gonna stop this liner, or this, I'm gonna stop the, the depth right in the center of my eye. I'm not gonna go in my inner corner with it. And that's the eye look, you guys. Hmm. I'm gonna go in and put on some mascara really quick, and then we're gonna finish up the rest of the face because I don't have blush or highlighter on. Um, and I'll be right back. Okay, you guys, so this is the mascara that I used. I used the Milk Kush mascara. I absolutely love that mascara. It's my favorite. 
Now, I just want to go ahead and balance out the rest of the face. I already put bronzer on and everything before I started this video. I didn't put blush. Um, and I don't think I'm going to use any more bronzer. I used my own powders, so there's no specific bronzer that I use. Um, sorry. But I am going to dip into some blush. And here are my blushes right here. And I'm going to dip into this peachy toned. And I'm going to take it on a, this is my favorite blush brush, the Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH06. Is it JH? Yeah, JH06 brush. And I'm just going to put it right <laughs> into my blush. Now, the blushes I make, they're super good. <laughs> they're super great. And then I'm just going to sweep this along my cheek. And once I get it deposited on there, I'm going to brush it over my nose. And brush it. You want blush to kind of feel like it's part of the rest of the look, not just on the apples of the cheek. I like to put it kind of the same place as I put my bronzer, sort of, but just a little bit lower so that the face looks like it has life to it. Let's go over to the other side. That's my dog. She's like, when are you going to be done? It's going to be on our mom. This is such a fluffy brush, so this is a perfect uh, brush to do this technique with. Don't do this with a denser brush because then it's going to look a little bit odd on your chin. But if you have that, that specific brush, it's perfect for that, or a brush that's similar to that. Pretty much always after I do my powders, <clears throat> I always spray my face with, with a mist. Whatever setting mist that you want, this is a... <clears throat> whatever setting mist that you want, this is the Glow Refresh Hydrating Mist. I don't even remember where I got this. It's kind of fancy schmancy, but I like the way it smells. Now for highlight, I'm going to go into the Natasha Denona um, Diamond and Blush Palette. I love this palette. Actually, I love everything that Natasha Denona does. I'm going to go into this It Cosmetics uh, KER50W brush. This is like a small um, stippling brush. Because I couldn't find the one from Makeup Forever, so I settled on this one, if I'm being quite honest with you. But it does the same thing. It, I like this kind of brush for like diffused highlighter and then you're going to see how I'm going to make it pop in just a minute. And I just sweep it over, sorry if you can't see me, and I just sweep it over the tops of my brow. Chloe, stop! And then I just take it down the nose. This brush, you can't really mess it up. It's, it's really, I don't know if you can tell, it's really diffuse. we I'm almost done, Mom. Now that I did that, I'm going to go into the cream base up here at the top. You can see all my fingerprints on top of this. It's been well loved. And I'm just going to warm it on my fingers. And I'm just going to put it on the highest part of my cheekbone like that. And same for over here. And then right on the tip of my nose. And then finish up with the diamond powder with the Jaclyn Hill Morphe JH09 brush. I'm now realizing how much I use these. I use her brushes because the last two videos that I've shot constantly been thinking to myself, oh my god, like, people are going to think that, like, I'm sucking Jacqueline's teat. And voila. This is the full face. Um, this is the eye look. It's a really pretty daytime friendly, like, smoky, brown smoky eye with just, like, a little kiss of, I had to use the rose gold. I just had to. It's too beautiful not to use the rose gold. Um, I know some people this might not be a daytime look, but for me, I think that it's very wearable. 
Um, so yeah, go pick up this palette. I think they, it's probably still on the ColourPop website. It's so gorgeous. It's got a lot of really nice shades in here. And I'm going to have to play with it a little bit more and, and maybe create some new looks. Just let me know. So if you guys really like this look and if you liked my video, then just go ahead and click the subscribe button, the like button, send me a comment, tell me what you guys want to see um, during this quarantine time. I have nothing but time to create content for all of you. So thank you so much for watching my video and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.